Hello everyone, I'm Robert Brown, a technical marketing engineer for Connected Analytics for Events in the Data Analytics and Business Group. And I'm here today to talk about a new offer we have at Connected Analytics for Events. We're deploying our analytics platform in stadiums and actually in venues like we're in here today. And I was hoping to be able to demonstrate that, but our next Cisco Live hopefully we'll have Connected Analytics for Cisco Live. So, what I'm going to talk about today is how we do the deployments. We'll talk a little bit about the architecture. I'm going to talk about how you would do an SQL query, how we pull in streaming data as compared to just standard data against the database, um, and some of the benefits of pulling in streaming data, filtering, and so forth. And then I'll actually have a couple of uh, Postgres SQL use cases. So what is Connected Analytics for Events? We've actually deployed, we've had three deployments right now. We deployed in the World Series, we deployed at Jacob Javits Convention Center, which is in New York, the National Retail Federation, if anyone in the audience has been there. And also, <clears throat> another location was a soccer stadium in Norway. So, so what I mean by an event is any sports or entertainment type of event. So your soccer games, your football games, those type of events are like a Cisco Live. So why do we want to deploy analytics there? So we can enhance the customer behavior, the fan behavior in the stadium. For example, I'm sure most of you waited in line for the restroom like I have since I've been here. What if we were able to make that easier for you and let you know what restrooms were available at a certain time? When you go to exit the stadium or the venue, what if we were to let you know this exit is least use to take this path and maybe a little bit further walk, but you'll get out 30 minutes faster. Those type of analytics are what we're looking to show here. So that's one of the things I'll show. Uh, then, like I mentioned, I'll talk about the architecture and so forth, and we'll go from there, and then stream and analytics. There we go. So again, what is connected analytics? It's a platform we deploy on premises or you can send the data into the cloud uh, through Cisco Cloud Services. We're also going to be available through Amazon and Azure and, and in the other cloud deployments too as well. So we have some operational data. You can take a look at the amount of, uh, <clears throat> amount of folks that are actually connected to the access points. We're monitoring the behaviors, the heat maps in and around the zones, specific zones. We get that information from MSE or CMX. And we're also pulling in contextual data from other sources too as well. What, when, why, where, how the users are located moving in and around the, the location of the venue. We're doing the same thing for retail too as well. You may have seen some of the retail analytics demos that are taking place and I encourage you to come down and look at some of our demos too as well in the world of solutions. We also have an application option where the, with smart devices you can, you can install an application on the phone or your particular smart device. And that's really powerful when you, when you install that on your device, because now we can send you targeted advertisements. We can have an option to buy tickets. You can buy food. You can check out, like I mentioned before, the exits and entrance in the stadiums. The targeted advertisements are popular from the sponsor's perspective, because that allows the, the venue owners to reap revenue, some return on investment there, because they do it on a per-click basis. And then one example I have in Norway, and I don't know a lot about soccer, but you're not allowed to replay on the stadium screens any of the penalty calls, because they're afraid of causing a riot or so forth. But if you have the application on your phone, you're able to do that. So it's going to take a while for, for a riot to take place on the phone. So what we're looking to do there is enhance that customer experience, and that's what we're looking to do. So here's an example of our deployment in Jacob Javits Convention Center. You notice the actual locations here. These are the different zones. These are only the areas we wanted to monitor. And we're looking for dwell times, the path that the customers take or the fans take in the stadium and those type of things, how long they stay there, uh, what areas they're looking at, and so forth. And we're collecting this data, like I mentioned. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. So one of our social media, we're, we're, we're consuming some events or some basically click stream type of data from a third party vendor too as well. So let's say if you have a negative Twitter feed that goes out, we can key in on that negative Twitter feed. That's powerful to be able to immediately respond to a negative Twitter feed. Uh, Facebook, for example, we have Facebook integration to go in and tell what kind of likes or dislikes you have 
you can take action on that. So in, that type of integration is very powerful, and that comes through our network-based ac application recognition, our NBAR2 data. And we're pulling in vendor or third-party vendor statistics, too, as well. So it's powerful. This is just another example of the cloud deployment. Like I mentioned before, we can deploy in the cloud. You have to actually send that data in the cloud if you do a cloud deployment. The Cisco Engage is the social enabled. That's the actual application on the device. And we can custom tailor that to your solution as you guys see fit. Now let's talk a little bit about the architecture. We're going to get into the nitty gritty here. So we've got a lot of data sources that are available to us. We can basically consume any type of data you send to us. So our standard data that we're consuming for connected analytics for events is NBAR2 data. We're consuming SNMP traps from the wireless LAN controllers. We have a JSON API, REST API connection from the MSC so we can get location-based data. And then from third-party vendors, we're also pulling in some what we call our contextual data. So any type of data source you think of that's available, we could consume. And then we take action on that. And that brings to mind a point I want to talk about here in just a little bit is we've got so much data coming in. What are we going to do with that data? It's a lot of data to manage. And that's what we're going to talk about is the continuous queries. We're able to filter that data because it's impossible. We've got millions of transactions per second. So I only want to look at the data that I need to find for my particular issue or what, whatever I want to do. So and this is just an example of, like I mentioned before, we're consuming the data here and our analytics and platform framework, and this is our user interface, which I actually showed earlier. Our connected analytics for events architecture, we're focused on AAA, SNMP traps from the WLC, like I mentioned earlier, MSE location data, and we're doing MBAR2. We're, we're actually getting in IP fix records from the ISG, which is your edge router. There's also an option to do through a VNAM. And I've, I've, there's another option where you can span traffic off the Wi-Fi VLAN and send it to a CSR, which we put on our on-prem collector. So there's, there's options are there. Our handlers are basically just our listeners. They're consuming those protocols. They're consuming that events. And then we have to sessionize and normalize those packets as they're coming in and make sure things are in the proper order and those type of things. And we send that data into the data warehouse if we decide to store this data. And that's one of the things that I'll show you here in just a second. We don't necessarily want to store the data. Only data that we want stored, we'll store it so we can look at it later in the tables. And this, again, is just our UI. So continuous query mechanisms, what we're calling continuous query mechanism, allows us to key in on a real-time event as the event has taken place. Instead of storing first and then having to write a query to go out and search for that data, we're actually going in and we can detect that Twitter feed, that negative Twitter feed, as it happens. It's a real-time event. So from a security perspective, that would be another example. Theft prevention would be an example. I want to know right away that, you know, if I'm looking at the video, I want to know right away that this person has picked up something, shoplifted from my store so I can go uh, take action. A denial of service stack, any of those type of events is something you want to key in on immediately. Our delayed consumption, we can actually create sliding windows. We're only consuming data over a certain amount of time. It's the data that we want to take in. And that's something we're going to talk about too as well. So your traditional model on top, this is IBM, Hadoop, and so forth, like I mentioned before. You're going to store the data first and query it later. Instead of the streaming data coming in, we've got to pull that stored data in. And that's your typical model. With streaming data, we can generate an actionable event as it takes place. And that's important, like I mentioned before, the Twitter feeds, is security events, and those type of things. And that's, what we, that's the way our continuous query mechanism works. So this is our CAE appliance. We have an appliance we can deploy on premises, or we can send the data into the cloud. These are the inputs that I mentioned before we have. We also have some contextual data coming in from third-party vendors. And these are the environment variables in the Postgres executable, which I'm actually going to show you. So for the developers in the crowd, you can create a front end with Java or Python, uh, what have you. And it doesn't have to be connected analytics for events. It can just be connected streaming analytics for whatever type of venue or service you want to do. So this, I'm, since I'm in connected analytics for events, that's why I'm demoing this. But I just want to make that clear that 
Connecting streaming analytics can be applied to any service or customer that you have. And I'm going to show how to start that here in just a second. So this is the streaming data that I talked about before. We can specify window operators. So we can look at specified time intervals. We can hop over time intervals, those type of things. And we'll, we'll go over those. Each window produces a set of records as a table. We can repeatedly apply those SQL results to the window operators over a specified time interval. And again, that's helping us filter out the data. That's helping us grab the bits and chunks of data that we want to look at over a time interval. Here's an example of a chunking time interval. We've got five second record windows, slices every five seconds. We've got a sliding window, visible five, every five seconds, and I advance two seconds. And we've got a landmark. We can set that window up and have it expire after a day, two days, or what have you. So those are just a few examples. There's many examples we have. Developers in the crowd, if you're interested, I can get you the development guide, and we can go from there. So here's an example of an every three seconds, I'm going to compute a Wi-Fi trap over a five-second sliding window. And this is, just a, this is an SQL query without us having to create a stream. I'm going to go in and do that here in just a second to demonstrate it for you. Again, we're going to do visible five seconds. We're going to advance over three seconds. And here would be the result. This is the query I put against the database. I've got data streaming in. Now keep in mind, even though we've got it set up to visible five seconds, advanced three seconds, that doesn't mean you're going to see that data every five to eight seconds or what have you. The data has to come in first. So it may be a little bit longer than that. Keep that in mind. This would be an example of creating a stream, Cisco Live. If I wanted to query for the IP address, the source IP address, close the connection. And notice this is from NBAR stream. NBAR stream is our, is our ABC, our deep packet inspection, or NBAR2 data. This is known as a derived stream. You can create a stream, and you can pull data out of another stream underneath it, too, as well. So that's an option that's available. So to summarize, Connected Analytics uses continuous queries. We use a Postgres SQL interface. We operate on streams and tables. The continuous queries allow us to consume that streaming data as we see fit, instead of us consuming all of the data because it would be impossible to consume. And I can filter out that data as it comes in. Very powerful. We can archive as an option. It helps our latency, keeps the latency down low, keeps the data moving, keeps the data flowing and coming in. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this. I'm going to log on to this device, and I'm going to send traffic in. Whoops. So I'm sending traffic. I'm actually replaying traffic that we captured. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? Can I make it bigger? Sure. Thank you. How's it? Do you want the text to be bigger? Hang on just a second. Tools. Options. Let me go ahead and try to get it going, then I'll try to make it bigger here in just a second. The multi-screen is killing me. Uh, So this is the, the psql-c, and I'm going to make it bigger in a minute. I'm sorry. This is the executable that I sent earlier, how to go in and run an SQL query. 
I've got data coming in. It's always good to drop and stream if it exists. If you've got existing streams, you want to make sure you drop those streams. And I'm going to do an SQL query against SP Wi-Fi trap. These are all the traps that I've got coming in right now. Notice that it, well, I'll make it bigger here in just a second, but we're visible. We're going to advance every one second. Tools, options. So notice we've got, I ran this query, and now I've got a continuous query, now I've got packets coming in. These are actual Wi-Fi locations for SP Wi-Fi traps. We're consuming those traps. Visible one second, advanced every one second. And let me figure out how to make this bigger for you. Tools. The multi-window is killing me. I apologize, I can't make it bigger. I mean, I can figure it out, but it's going to take me a minute. So this is an example of a query, an actual SQL query taking place, like I mentioned before, continuous query, SQL query. Now let me show an example of a stream. We're going to create a stream. We're going to create our own stream. I'm going to create a stream called Cisco Live. So we created a stream called Cisco Live with these IP address, a specified time interval. And we can actually query on the stream too as well. So this is the actual stream that we created. We created on custom-based streams. So we've got a continuous query taking place here. And I'm just keying in on IP addresses with a time interval. So again, this is allowing us to query in a real-time fashion. We're not sending the data straight into our database. We're running this query in a real-time fashion. And that is it, guys. Any questions? Questions? Well, thank you guys for using Cisco. Thank you for being a part of Cisco family. Uh, we hope to see you at the next Cisco Live. Thank you.